precious God of heaven, Father of all the angels, we humble ourselves before your throne of grace and the prayers of the angels that are heaven. For the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, the Lord, the Father, and the Holy Today, for we spend time with the precious and the Lord.
Good morning, church. Good morning. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Yes, indeed. God is so good, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to welcome you all to this service. Um, the, if this is your first time to worship with us, we want to extend the extra welcome. And we want you to know that it's a, always, it is a blessing to be here together. And we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit that has brought you here so that we can worship together. Those who are watching online, I want to welcome you as well. If this is your first time, praise the Lord. And it's always a blessing to be here together. Uh, my name is Eric. I'm the pastor at the Hope Community Church. And I, we are here to worship the living God, our Savior, our Redeemer. I do have a couple announcements to make. And where is my people? Come on. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, God. There we see. Anyway. I'll make it up. <laughs> oh, God, Jesus Christ. My people is somewhere in my announcement list. Anyway, we'll go there. Thank you, Jesus. Our brothers and sisters in Christ, a couple of announcements to know and to put in your calendar. Uh, we have a Monday, Thursday service at 6.30. And uh, the day between the 28th. And also Good Friday, the 29th. We are going to worship here. The Chancellor Choir, I think they will perform once, uh, once, one, one day, and then uh, Jacob will do the Friday, Good Friday. So we want you to, to come and worship with us on that particular day. And then uh, um, this one is, uh, oh my God, it's really, really bright. I think it's the, the, oh, the Bible study. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, Bible study, uh, we are kicking off our Bible study next week. Uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, we are encouraging you to join us. It's a very uh, blessed place to be. That's where you learn a lot. And uh, I'm always telling people, Christians, that if you are always, I know when you come to church on Sunday, uh, you know, you want to, you're expecting your pastor to preach from the Bible, but your own reading and your friend's reading gives you really a way to stand in this world. So I'm inviting you to join us. If you need a book, I'm here. Actually, I've got books already in my office. I'll give you a book next Thursday at 6.30. We are going to start our Bible study. It's a very blessed place to be. I'm telling you, no one, including your pastor, is part of there. But we don't. Uh, we learn from each other. Amen? We have this saying, whenever you come, your answer is right. <laughs> Amen? We learn from each other. And uh, the, we have also five ways to give to the house of the Lord. We encourage you to give because the Lord, uh, God has given us the, His only Son, Jesus Christ. So give. Um, we, we pray that God speaks to you. You give for the glory of God. You know, it's always hard, you know, that your pastor to stand up and remind you. Because I remind myself that I need to give. Amen? Because we are called to do so for the glory of God. So I'm encouraging you to give in five ways. And Africa University trip, uh, we are still collecting some of the items. And we'll let you know when we'll stop, probably in two weeks. Um, those who have got, uh, who I feel called to donate, please do so. I've already started getting things in my office. May God bless you. And uh, we are going to bless people in Zimbabwe. And uh, what else again? Oh, the baiting. All right, please praise the Lord. Please sign up at 10.30 after the service. Karen, uh, Karen Louder, she'll be uh, on, the back, on the back of the church. If you want to come and have bedding, we are taking all this bracelet uh, to Zimbabwe to give to the orphan. So we need some volunteers to come and, you know, just for 30 minutes and 45 minutes, and God will give you years for that, for what you do. Amen? Uh, Karen Louder will be at the back. She'll be at the back of the church. And uh, if this is your first time to worship with us, we have connection card in our pews. Sign up and put up your name and your address, your phone number. Your uh, Pastor Eric will reach out to you or Pastor Nancy. And uh, you can even put it in the uh, offering plate. May God really bless us as we begin our services with prayer. I think I've done all that. But uh, hallelujah. Holy Spirit.
Holy, holy God, we humble ourselves before your throne of grace to acknowledge your presence. We pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, let your presence be revealed, holy God. Jesus, you reminded us by saying, my house shall be called a house of prayer. We are here, Christ the Lord, praying unto you in Jesus' holy name. We praise your presence. We praise you. We praise the presence of the morning star, the living water, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the Savior, the Redeemer, the Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh, Elohim. We praise you. You are here with us. We pray the presence of Elroy, the God who sees everything. We gathered here in your name. We ask you, Christ the Lord, for forgiveness. Forgive us, Christ the Lord. We have sinned against you in so many ways. Holy Jesus, have mercy upon us. For your blood that was shed on the cross to sanctify us and to purify us in Jesus' holy name. We pray according to your word in the book of Acts that so you pour out your spirit. Holy God, pour out your Holy Spirit in Jesus' holy name. Let your Holy Spirit be at work within us and through us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the Holy Spirit teach us how to pray. Let the Holy Spirit teach us how to forgive. Let the Holy Spirit teach us how to be obedient. Let the Holy Spirit, Christ the Lord, invite us even to live sacrificially for the glory of your name in this world in Jesus' holy name. We are here, Christ the Lord, as your vessels. Bless uh, this ministry, God. We pray that, Lord, of our vision and mission in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for any burdens we have brought in our heart. Oh, Lord, we asking you for your righteous hand to touch them all in Jesus' holy name. We pray for a nation in the name of Jesus Christ to know Christ the Lord. We pray for a nation, oh God, to be delivered from darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray in Jesus' holy name for the election that is coming up. Not our will, but your will be done. Not our way, your ways in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for the world to know you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we bless you. We humble ourselves before your throne of grace. We call upon the heavens. We call upon the heavenly kingdom that Jesus Jesus preached about the kingdom of heaven. We speak that kingdom to be present in our midst. We speak that kingdom of God to be present in each and every person's life. In Jesus' holy name, we pray for that kingdom. Oh God, in our homes, that kingdom. In our city, that kingdom. In this world, that kingdom. In this, in this, uh, in this nation, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your kingdom. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Here we are, Lord, in your presence. Holy Spirit, do not leave us the same way we came in. Holy Spirit, do your way. Do your way. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. We worship you. King of kings, the Lord of lords, through your son, Jesus Christ, we have learned how to pray. Let us pray the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of God. Amen.
Lord. Let some guy invite you to stand up if you are able. Uh, before we go to our call to worship, we invite you to move around if you are able and just uh, give your brothers and sisters advice, especially if you speak or oh, God bless you. Just raise up to say that together we are with the Lord. Let's move around before we, we go to our call. Those who are not able, it's all right. They will come to you. Praise the Lord. Peace be with you. <laughs> Peace be with you. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Praise the Lord. I'm inviting you to stand up now if you are able. Let us go to our call to worship. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we gather today to worship the one who created us. The one who called us. The one who equipped us. The one who loved us without end. With joyful heart, let us worship God. All, All glory be to God. God. Amen. Remaining standing, let us sing our opening hymn, page uh, 126. Sing praise to God who reigns above. Let's sing together.
Remaining standing, let us go to our Apostle Creed, shall we? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pasha's father, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. coffee but it's all right my voice praise the lord praise the lord we're gonna take this moment uh i think the the choir they've gone there they will find us in the middle they're giving a testimony my brothers and sisters in christ tonight at uh, this morning uh my wife and i we want to take an opportunity to present our son before the lord i'm gonna invite her to come up here and um i don't have a mic but she'll use mine it's all right one plus one equal one He's going to bring the baby, and I'm going to invite uh, uh, Pastor Kati to 
I don't know this mic. You just get a hand on my end. Can be loud. Can be loud. I don't know. <laughs> Right. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to invite my wife to come here, and I'm going to give this one to Pastor Kachi. Rocky. So today we are, we are here to do exactly what the scripture says on uh, the day when Jesus was brought back to church with the, uh, Joseph and Mary. And uh, before we share the testimony what the Lord has done, the life of our baby. We're going to ask a pastor, Kachi, because I'm the pastor. My son must have a pastor too. Amen? <laughs> so she's going to uh, pray for my son and pray for us. And uh, uh, normally when we do, we always bring a gift to the house of the Lord as a sign of our gratefulness. So we're going to give this to the house of the Lord. And we'll give it to Pastor Kachi Groff, and she will put it in the offering plate. When she's she's done, all right. A blessing, a blessing to you. Well, then <laughs> I will go ahead and do this. Um, last night during my quiet time, my quiet time with God, I had a prayer that came. Thank you. 
thank you all for your blessing of this time. How many of you are leaving? I can't tell. Maybe my wife, uh, she, she said she, does, she doesn't have a lot of, I don't know what the mic is not working, but she, she wants to say just a word and then I will share what happened. I will ask her to go and sit down if you don't mind. And as she's standing so long, me, I'm used to stand. All right. If you have something to say, to congratulate her. Mm. All right, thank you. You can sit down. Um, I'm going to be so quick uh, because of timing, but I want to share this. Uh, this is really, um, I want to thank God. As I'm standing before you and people are watching online, as we pray over our child, it's a blessing. It was not easy. I have to hold on myself because every time I share this and uh, um, one thing with Jesus Christ in the Bible, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ every time, he healed the sick, the crippled, the blind received sight. If you read well your Bible, Jesus always telling them, go, don't follow me, go. The ten lepers, they were, they were healed. Jesus told them, go to the priest. They received healing. The woman suffering from the bleeding 12 years. All the story. The blind Bartimaeus. The Samaritan woman. She did run back to the village and said, come and see. There is a reason why. I'm standing here because the Bible says so. I follow the word. I feel very humble and I have to honor when I give my life to Jesus Christ. I always say, Christ the Lord, you are the journey for my life. And then I said to myself, and I will say it again, I will give testimony no matter what for your glory because Jesus said it again. He promised the disciples, you will be my witness, the good news. So what I'm going to share this with you. It is to praise Jesus. Amen? He has done it. I think three weeks or two weeks before my son, before Corinne, my wife, delivered. She went to the doctor to do the checkup. And uh, she was told that your son, I have a picture of that. And I share this with you. Your son will be born with the, I have to pronounce it well, clef, is it clef, clef lip? And then uh, I was moving around with the, uh, I told my wife I dropped her in, in slancing. And then I was going to pick up the boys. And I called her and said, she said, I'm done. You can come and pick me up. I drove back. And she got in the car, we're driving to pick up the two boys from school. She told me what the doctor told her. That our son will be born like that. I was in tears. I drove together. We picked up the boys to, from school. We came home. We did not eat. We were not, we were not hungry. We started crying. That was a Wednesday. 
we had prayer here. I took the courage. Even though I'm going through this pain, I have to go and pray. I came here, I found Pastor Nancy. He's the only person that I told in this church. And we prayed with Pastor Nancy. And uh, after prayer, that day actually Brother Felix did not even come that day. And I called my fellow brother in Christ, Joe Samalenga in Washington, D.C. We prayed. We prayed. We came home. We never told our parents back home in Africa. That night, I said, Lord, you are the mighty God. You move mountains. The Bible said this and said that and said that. You said this. You said that. You said that. And I had to spend three days sleeping on the floor. The first day, I slept on the floor. Till that. Around 4 a.m., 4 or 5 a.m., it was during snow time, winter time, I slept on the floor. I said, God, I'm going to sleep on the floor. I'm going to shake up the heaven. If you did say this is you, you do it for your glory. And that day, the first night, I woke up in the morning. God showed me the scripture. I said, wake up and read the scripture. Second King chapter 20, verses 1 to 6. You read it at home. I'm not going to read it. Just write it down. It's a story about the king Ezekiah, who was told by the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, that you will die. And Isaiah heard it. The king Isaiah, he was the king. He had all that he took. He had everything. But one thing he did, he turned around and he first to heaven he prayed. And God spoke to the prophet Isaiah. I said, go back and tell my servant. I've heard him. And when I read that, I got strengthened a little bit. I move around with my smile on my face because the Bible says, this is the day the Lord has made. I, I'm, I, I've been preaching. I came here. I ministered. I did all these phone calls. I reply emails. But inside of my heart and my wife, we're deep in prayer. The second day, I slept again on the floor. Around 5, somewhere there, a.m., the God spoke again to my heart and said, wake up and read that scripture, Genesis 18, 14. That's when the angel appeared to Abraham and Sarah was laughing and God says, can anything too hard for the Lord? And that, that scripture was really strengthened. I called my brother Joe Samalenge and my wife together. We prayed, we prayed. My wife was supposed to deliver on the 19th of February, but uh, God has done it. My brothers and sisters in Christ on the 14th, I think 14th, 8, 8, 8, 14th uh, at the midnight, uh, she said, the, the Holy Spirit is working around. I'm standing here just to tell you what the amazing God we serve. Amen. Don't doubt my brothers and sisters in Christ. We went to the hospital, and this is amazing. One hour and 40 minutes, Corinne gave birth. And they asked her questions, and it was really amazing. God was at work. They looked for vans, and they could not even find it. They asked her to do that, to do that. Mama, are you going to do it? I said, I will do it. I was in prayer. And around 1.40, Elijah came. My wife was in pain, but I want to tell you, the first thing when I was looking at was the lips. I look at the lips. I look again. I look again. And I say, wow. Jehovah. Jehovah. Rapha. You are the God who heals. I start praising the Lord and I start putting a song. Actually, maybe Jacob is going to sing that song, Second Service. I put it on a YouTube. I start playing it and praise the Lord. The, 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 the nurses who were gathered there, actually one of the nurses, she's a Christian. She knew me. She saw me one day in Trinity Church here in Lansing. The Lord has done it. I said, Joshua HaMashiach. 
Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. I want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. We serve a living God. No matter the result was supposed to come, but I'm standing here. I was supposed to stand again. If we did not, the result, if the baby did not come the way he came. Because it was a promise to the living God. I said, God, if you do it in your will, I will testify that you are Jehovah Rapha. Heal my son. We called our parents, they were in tears, and said, why didn't you tell us? Our son Elijah, I've brought a lot of faith in our lives. Not only in our lives, I fully believe even in the life of this church. We serve a mighty God. A mighty God. The following day, I went to pick up, uh, to drop off my son. Actually, one of our youth is the one who step, slept at my house. I called him in the night. At midnight, he walked. He's our neighbor. He came and slept there. I had to go and release him to go to school. But the following day, my wife was with the baby in the hospital, and this pediatrician, so they came in, two of them, they were, came to schedule the surgery for my son. They came here and they, they came and they asked my wife, and where's the baby? My wife was told, I said, oh, Lord, this is what I told my, my wife, because when I came there, my wife told me, there were two nurses, they came to, to look at uh, Elijah so that they can schedule their, his surgery. And then I told, because she was in pain, she said, they asked her, where's the baby? I said, the baby's there. And they look at the baby, I said, wow. They look again, wow. Again, wow. And I said to myself, praise the Lord, because if they did find me, I'm not ashamed for the Lord Jesus Christ because what he did on the cross. If they did find me, I was supposed to tell them, Jehovah Rapha, he did it. So this is the testimony I want to share with you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, what the Lord has done. Only Jesus can do it. Amen? Let me hear you. Amen? Amen? Only Jesus can do it. And I will share this testimony, and I will share it again, I will share it again. And actually, there are more than 10 churches in the United States. They are going to share this testimony, my fellow pastors, in different states. And I told them, go for it. Because we Christians, sometimes we do undermine the power of Christ Jesus. Amen? He has done it, and not for our glory, but for his glory. There's nothing which is impossible to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Praise the Lord. Let's hear the word of God this morning. Because of timing, I'll be so quick. Hallelujah. Today, let us pray. Father, I humble myself before your throne of grace, and I say thank you, Jesus. Without you, Christ the Lord, we cannot even gather here. Lord Jesus, I pray may you open the floodgate of heavens and pour to Holy Spirit to open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, our heart to receive your word. Father, as I stand before your children, may you be increased as I decrease. In Jesus' holy name, amen. I'll be so quick because of timing, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. By the way, today we don't have Sunday school, so we can keep going. going. We have immersed going. Uh, so praise the Lord. Um, I love, uh, one thing that I love when I see footballers, players, when they get interviewed, and the first things that I always love what they say is this. First of all, I want to give God the glory. I love when they do that, because they fully understood the gift they have came from God. Today's message is, do not take God's glory. Do not take God's glory. Now open up your Bible from the book of Acts chapter 12, verses 21 to 23. 
The Bible says this. So on the sixth day, Herod displayed in a royal attire, sat on his throne and gave a speech to the people. And the people kept shouting, the voice of a God and not of a man. Then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because Herod did not give glory to God. And he was eaten up <laughs> by wounds and died. It's a true story. Because he did not give God the glory. Because he did not give the glory. He did not say, the Bible did not say because he had a royal outfit. He did not say because he was in a, an exalted position. Actually, God raised Herod up. He did not say because he was wealthy, powerful, influential, and famous, but it says because he did not give glory to God. In other words, all glory be to God. All glory be to God. We know the original sin that was committed in heaven by Lucifer. One of the three chief angels in heaven. I want to tell you those three angels, maybe somehow you question. There was Michael. Michael is the warring angel. Whenever you have war in your life, whenever God wants to assign an angel, is Michael. Michael, I always tell in Christian, when you pray, angels are jobless in heaven. They are jobless. They do not have job. They only have a job when you and I pray. That's when God said, go to Eric, Michael. Fight for him. That's Michael. And the Gabriel, the messenger, angel, is always brought message to earth, such as to the Virgin Mary. And then there was one named Lucifer, Light's bearer, who was the worship leader. The book of Isaiah 14 to 13, it says, I will exalt myself. That Lucifer, I'm going to exalt myself above the throne of God. Listen, I will be like the most high. He said it five times. I will, I will, I will, I will. It's like me, 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 me. Five times. You know what he was doing to just sum it up? Lucifer did not give God the glory. God gave him the position. God gave him the title. God gave him the name Lucifer. God gave him the influence, but he did not give God the glory. This is so important what I'm preaching this morning uh, that I'm sharing with you as to get deeper in our hearts as believers in Christ. There is a danger whenever we take the glory of God. And the enemy tried to do it many times. Many times there is a danger. In the book of Luke chapter 4, 1 to 8, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. The wilderness is a place of extremes. When Jesus was in the wilderness, fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, the devil himself, not the demons, there's a different, they're not the demon, the devil himself came to Jesus. He came with an extreme attack against Jesus with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the lust of pride of life. These are the three big ones. Jesus had not even started his ministry, and this guy showed up. And it was not just demons, as I say, it was Lucifer himself coming to Jesus. And he had one thing on his mind, to turn Jesus away from bringing 
glory to the Father. One thing, he had only one thing in his mind. I want to take this Jesus to bring glory to me, not to the Father. I want to understand, I want you to understand the reason of Jesus to the extreme uh, temptation that he was facing. Jesus began to show extreme consecration. In other words, Jesus began to use the word in extreme way. And he kept saying to Lucifer in Matthew 4, he kept saying, it is written, it is written, it is written. He kept saying that, it is written. Thou shalt not, thou shalt worship the Lord of our God and Him alone. When the enemy comes with extreme temptation and attack against you or against your family, I have a good news to tell you. This is a sign that Jesus is beside you. Amen? This is a good sign to let you know that Jesus is walking with you. Don't ever doubt that when the enemy comes. Then start singing and say, praise God, hallelujah. It's a sign that Jesus is with you. Temptation does not last forever, but you ought to double up on your extreme response in conversation and say, well, if you are going to hit me with extreme demonic opposition, I'm going to hit you with extreme fasting and prayer. I'm going to hit you with extreme worship. I will turn on my worship the whole week. You let them know. I won't, I won't live like this way forever. When you are under extreme temptation and demonic attack, get extreme consecration. Amen? Get also extreme prayer. If you are used to pray for 10 minutes, go for 15 minutes. Amen? Just go for 10 minutes. Like, oh, God, Jesus. If you are used to pray for one second, just can you make an hour? To go extreme worship. If you sing Amazing Grace, one verse, go all the verses. Get extreme into the book and read it. And actually read it louder. You read the book louder. If Jesus did it, maybe we need to be serious about reading this book. I'm so tired of, of people just being so nice, Christian. We need to work up, amen? We need to work up, brothers and sisters in Christ. Sometimes we need some extreme worship. We need some people who are not ashamed to glorify God publicly or even in the church. When we are worshiping, lift up your hand as I worship the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to say, yes, I believe to the, to the world. I believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. I believe in the power of the cross. I believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I believe in the name of Jesus Christ, which is above every name in this world. It's more powerful than anything hell can bring against us. Amen? We need to be bold and declare that. I believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. You need to be bold. Hallelujah. It does not matter what other people say or, or do. I believe it. My neighbor will hear it. My president will hear it. I believe in Jesus Christ. We need to be bold, my brothers and sisters. Do you know that the, the scripture says in Matthew 4 that the devil took him up? The devil took him up. You know that the devil can raise people up? You know that? He can raise people up. He can give firms. The devil can give people uh, firms. Be careful when you are going up. The devil took Jesus to, a, uh, to an exceedingly high mountain. It is not that God has a problem with us. No, God does not have a problem with us being blessed. He loves to bless us. That actually is nature for blessing. And doing amazing things in our lives. God is very good in that. With our lives and having big dreams, God loves to give us big dreams. But when you begin to not give God the glory, that's the key. When God gives you a big dream, give Him the glory. 
When God is blessing you, give him the glory. That's the key. That is what I'm preaching. What he said, the devil took him. He took Jesus up. And, and you can be famous. You can be powerful. People will bow their head when you walk in the, in the room. But Jesus said, no. He said to the devil, no, I cannot. I cannot give you the glory. I'll give glory to the Father. To the Father. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to receive that kind of glory. The glory belongs to God alone. The longing to be praised belongs to the Father. Jesus rejected the other, uh, the offer to take the glory that he would want to put on his shoulder. He refused it. He said the glory belongs to the Father. Immediately he woke out of that wilderness after 40 days and fasting and, and listened to this. I love this. Hallelujah. In the book of Luke 4, 14, Jesus went straight to the synagogue. Straight to the synagogue, which is the church today, and open up the book. He never opened anything else. He opened up the book. He never checked the attendance. He checked the book. He never checked about how much you have collected. He checked the book. He never checked about how good are you in singing and preaching. But he said, let me check the book. He opened the book. He said, the book, that's where the glory. The book as if to say, all the glory, all the glory belongs to God. Friend, this church moving forward has one celebrity, and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen? Jesus Christ. Not Eric, not the choir director, not the leadership, but who? Jesus Christ. Jesus. We are called to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. We do not want men's glory because your glory cannot heal anybody. My glory can save anybody, but his glory can save and heal. Amen? We want to be careful to give God's glory. We want to be careful. God, help me to preach. I'm almost done there. I've been asking this question many times since I started preaching in my life. I've been asking this question. I keep asking this question. Why do I preach? Why do I preach? Every time I'm always asking this question, God, why do I preach? What I'm saying is, God gave us the gift to preach, but is my preaching about me? Is it about I hope I do impress all the people? It is not about me. I'm going to tell you something. Why did God give you success? Why would God raise you up? Why would God give you a big dream and let you begin to see it? Because he does not mind. He doesn't mind. In the book of Acts, listen, 12, he says, Herod was in a row of fits. He doesn't mind. Says, it's okay. You can have it. God loves that. He looked, uh, Herod looked good and dressed up. He had a speaking gift. When he stand up, oh God, everybody will be moved because of that gift. He had an uh, uh, oratory power and word and persuasive speech. It was just an amazing and God did not have a problem with him using this gift and his talent. He did not have the problem. The problem God had with him he, he did not give God the glory. Amen? That's the only problem. All that we have, we must give God the glory. The glory. Somehow we have to get a, a mentality and a heart that says, God, I'm not in this for my glory. We are here not for our glory. We are so humble that the higher you take us, the more we want to go down and we want to give you the praise. We want to give you all the glory. You alone, you deserve the glory. Why do you serve God, my folk, my brothers and sisters? Why do you serve God? Why do you sing? Why do you preach? Why do you give? Is it to get followers? Is it to get a privilege? Is it to, uh, it is not about our net worth. It is not about the, it is, listen to this. 
it is about the loss that God received the glory. Amen? Let me say it again. It is about the loss. You serve because there is a lot of the loss that are there. Amen? You sing because whenever the lost hear the songs, and they are going to give who? God the glory. Amen? Listen to this. Moses' ministry, hallelujah. Moses' ministry was not about him. It was about two and a half million people who were in chains of slavery. Jonah's ministry was not about him. It was about 600,000 people who were going to perish if the gospel did not hit the show of a city called Nineveh. Esther's ministry was not about her. She was living in the palace, remember? The Bible says Esther lived in the palace. She had everything Oh, God, listen to what she said. The Bible says, Esther chapter 4, verses 14, Who knows? Who knows that I've come to the kingdom for such a time as this and said, I, If I perish, I perish. But God put me where I am for his glory, not mine. I'm not preaching that God does not want to raise us up. I believe he will exceedingly blessing you and abundantly above everything you can imagine. There is God to be that the more he blesses, he raises you. It is not for your glory. Amen? It is not for your honor, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's for God's glory. It is not for some false humility sometimes we pretend. This is eternal stuff, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Your time, your talent, my talent, your treasurer will all fall, be, will, will all be judged. And some people will only do it and still doing it for their glory. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians 3, 12, said people will be like hair and it will just burn up all this gift i know god uses us all we are just we we are just doing what god has called us to do as a church and god get all the glory we never we need to remember this give god the glory do not get the arrowed spirit do not do that don't forget God could, could have blessed anybody in this world. God could have raised and used anybody. God could have put anybody and all the church in the spot. The church is called to give God the glory. Amen? What is this church about? Is it about entertaining or evangelism? Is it about telling, uh, selling tickets or winning souls? Is it about uh, publicity or is it about harvesting? The pursuit of fame, listen to this, the pursuit of fame the, hurts the church today. Hurts the church. A lot of church are getting hurt because they pursue fame. When we are up here singing and praying and preaching and ushering and ministering and giving not and giving not for the glory of God, it hurts the church. When we preach, we preach for the glory of God. When we sing, we sing for the glory of God. When we give, we give for the glory of God. Everything we do in the house of God, we do it for the glory of God. Amen? For the glory of God. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Hallelujah. Oh, especially folks online. I need to finish this. My glory is not his glory. My glory cannot heal you. Me being that is destroying you. There is nothing in me and you in, in my glory. It can help you. But God's glory can help you. Amen? When God comes into the room, his glory can instantly set you free. His glory can heal you. His glory can serve you. His glory can restore your marriage. His glory can fix family problems. His glory. Do you have Herod's spirit? 
which says, I won't give God the glory? Or do you have John the Baptist spirit that says in the book of John 3, 13, it says, he must increase, I must decrease. Which one do you have? He must increase. I'm closing with this story about Herod sitting on the throne. And I'm just going to be, uh, let's read uh, Acts chapter 12, 13, uh, 20, 12. By shouting is the voice of God. They start shouting is the voice of God. It's not a man. Let's worship him. And Acts, uh, can you go to Acts chapter 12, 23? Immediately. An angel struck him because Herod did not give glory to God. And he was eaten by worms and died. The question is, are you going to trade wonders for worms? Are you going to trade the superstar for the supernatural? Because you cannot have both. You have to have one. Amen? I must decrease and God must increase in everything I do. I'm looking... Uh, people here this morning, they are looking at me, and people online, they are watching and say, what's wrong with Pastor Eric? My brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm not pushing too hard. We'll start with ourselves for me today. We have a tendency sometimes if we do not watch it, if we do not stay prayerfully, if we do not stay around the Bible and let the Holy Spirit do a deep work, we'll walk around like we are the one doing things. No, it is God doing it, and he deserves to receive all the glory. Amen? I do not, my friend, let me say this, uh, my brothers and sisters, I do not care, I don't care how you are. If you are a human being, you can get these worms, the worms of pride. Worms of arrogance, worms of looking at me. Look at me, look at me. I'm the one who's doing it. We need to be careful. We need to lift up all the glory to Jesus Christ. Amen. My fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, I love you so much. I'm not too hard, but I want this word I was spoken to my heart and for you, all of us, that we are called to give God the glory. Remember one day, Jesus came in with a container. Jesus came in with a container, with a basket. And then that was in the middle of discussion. The disciples were discussing, who's going to be first? Who's going to be the greatest? Who's going to hold? And Jesus showed up with a container with a tower on his shoulder in the bucket. And then he knelt, by the way, if you know that, he, do, he did this. And he called the disciples and said, take your sandal off. I'm going to wash your feet. Amen. He humbled himself. And lift up the glory to the Father. I put that on the, on the screen, Deb, please. Do not ever forget what Jesus has done for you. Stay humble and give the glory to God always. I invite you to give God the glory today if you are fully understand how good God has been to you and to this church. Maybe how much you forgot where God brought you from. But will you give him the glory right now? And from your heart, give him the honor and glory. Amen. I'm going to invite you today because of time. We are, we are not going to sing. Uh, we are going just to sing the closing hymn. I'm inviting you to stand up. Please. Hallelujah. We have a tendency, Christians, especially nowadays, many churches in the world, it is all about me. It is all about what we are doing. You know, we are inviting people to our church. No, it is not about us. It's about him. Amen? It's about him. Christians, we need to bring that back in our heart. Humble yourself. And lift him up every day. He deserves to receive all the glory. There is a danger. If we do not keep. God the glory. Amen. I'm going to pray. 
going to pray. Hallelujah. If you are one of the person who feel like this is really my message, ask God to help you. The Lord take the pride, take the arrogance out of me. From today on, I will give all the glory and we serve a loving God who loves you so much. Maybe you have been pride. It's like me, 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 me. Do not get the spirit of Lucifer, the spirit of Herod. Do not get those spirit. Let God be God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, holy and living, together as a church today, those who are watching online, trust the Lord, we humble ourselves. We come to you as a church with towers in our shoulders together. With, we are holding up the container with water, all of us on our knees, Lord Jesus Christ, acknowledging, Father, you deserve all the glory. You call us to serve with humility. Hallelujah, glory to Jesus Christ. I pray for each and every soul gathered here. May your spirit increase in their lives. May they know, Christ the Lord, you are the one who raised them up. You're going to raise them up. You're going to bless them up. Holy Jesus, oh God, help us by your spirit. Not, 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 not to forget to give all the glory. Father, we bless you. We worship you. In Jesus' holy name, we pray together and we say amen. amen. Let us sing only the first verse. The closing hymn, My Hope is Built. And then when you go home, those who, want, who brought your offering, you can put your offering there. Um, I know today there's no Sunday school, praise the Lord. That was good. You just go straight home or you go for lunch anyway. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us sing, my hope is built. Hallelujah. Let us sing together. Only the first verse, Deb. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Are they not trust the sweetest frame, but only live on Jesus' name? On Christ the holy rock of stand, or other ground he sinking sand, or other ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I may receive benediction. You, do you have towers at home? Do you have towers? Yeah. If you do not have, I'll give you one. <laughs> because I know you take shower every day. So every day you take shower, you hold your tower. Remember to be humble. Amen. Remember that you are holding your towel on your shoulder like Jesus Christ and you are washing people's feet. You humble yourself and he himself is being lifted up. Christ the Lord. Let us receive benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You can come and as you go, you put your, your offering on, on the offering plate. May God bless you.